everyone, my name is Marianela Jimenez. I am Office Manager for Center for Conservation Long Island Chapter here in this county. I'm here to speak to you about the Andy Warhol Preserve. With the help of the Andy Warhol Foundation, in 1992, the Nature Conservancy established the 15-acre oceanfront Andy Warhol Preserve. The preserve is part of 2,400 acres of protected land and water. And for migrating birds, it's important to and stop oversight along the Atlantic Bay. Under an agreement with the Foundation, the Nature Conservancy sponsors an annual visual arts project at the preserve to foster innovative artistic expression inspired by this unique and ecological important place. Today I have the pleasure to introduce to you an amazing artist. His name is Eric Stever and he is going to be telling us what he is working on right now. Congratulations on your selection as an Andy Warhol project artist at the Preserving Monster. How do you propose painting or addressing the site in your work? Well, when I first came here, thank you, thank you, Marianella. When I, when I applied and when I first visited, I had in mind maybe to work with materials here on the site directly and sample some of the textures, making imprints, and, uh, um, and some uh, color sampling, which is an aspect of my painting. Awesome. Now that you have visited the preserve yesterday, in fact, have your plans changed? Yes, they have, Marianella. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I was impressed by the variety of terrain here as, as one enters the site and moves through the, the bayberry covered pathways and finding mode uh, um, paths through the moorlands, and while while you can hear the the surf pounding, it's it's really dramatic when you come to the edge of the bluff and look down and see the see the actually the whole beach scene unfold, as well as the cliffs towards the east and also further towards the west. Cool. What are the some of the landscape elements that interest you most on the beach? I think probably it's, it's about the sensation of the water moving into the rocks and then this very loud draining sound, sort of a, a very loud gurgle as the water retreats back and back. And, and also the tide pools or the, and the puddles of water that are left behind on, on some of the raised rocks. Um, I also, I like the sensation of how one could walk along this coast mm -hmm. and there's a sense of disappearing around that bend. And then equally to the to the to the west, at, at certain times of day, it seems as though the cliffs are actually um, in shadow at, like this time of day. And and the water is a is a rather remarkable hue. Um, these are I'm more interested in capturing um, the experience of this this landscape, some of the sensations of, about um, entering into it. That's my that's my real interest at this point. Gotcha, beautiful. How is the preserve unique among other places you have visited before? Well, it's very. <laughs> it feels very private and very very quiet. There, there's. I haven't seen anyone since I've been visited, and I could. I imagine it's somewhat lonely here, but perhaps that's the whole point, mm -hmm. to, to have this oneness with nature. Right. The only other place I could think of, it just reminds me of North Atlantic Island, maybe Martha's Vineyard, maybe the, the Gay Head region of Martha's Vineyard. That's, a, that's, about, that's about it. In your application, you spoke about the artists and writers who worked in Montauk. Who most interests you? Um, Balcom Green Abstract Expressionist Painters, who, who built a house here um, during that period, during the New York School ABEX period in the 1950s. They were also, also um, jo they were joined by Charlotte Park and her husband James Brooks. And this became an important place for them as well, where they, where they painted. But um, many people came here too. Um, Edward Alby spent mm -hmm. time here and also founded the barn not too far from town. Okay. And and playwright novelist poet Joe Pintoro set his second novel, State of Grace, largely in Montauk itself. 
And over the years, he enjoyed visiting regularly from his home in Sag Harbor um, to Montauk as a, as a, as a, maybe a reset. Awesome. And why is Montauk and the Andy Warhol Conserve important to artists and painters like yourself? I believe, I, I, I think it's a place maybe where um, Andy Warhol and Paul Morrissey, who accompanied him, I believe, and purchased, who's a filmmaker in the site, spent, spending time here, I believe um, it was really access to, to nature that, that interested them. Uh, of a place just to just to be. Um, I think it has. It, it's it's an ideal place to to um, seek some solitude and contemplation. Mm -hmm. But as far as for a painter, a painter like myself, I think it presents some some nice challenges. And and, and among those being capturing something about the site and and all of its varied experience here and. Uh, even the sense of the, the warmth, as, as we can feel right now, but also the coolness of the breeze that's ever present. Um, that's that's really that's what that's what I aim to do in, in, in my project. Thank you, Eric, and we look forward to visiting you in your studio and sharing your progress in our upcoming workshop with you. Thank you. Hi, Marinella. Thanks for coming. Come inside. Thank you for having me at your studio. Oh, I've been looking forward to this. Please talk to us about the progression of your artwork. Well, the paintings track the progression of moving from the trail to the Montauk moorlands and down one of the blocks to the Atlantic Ocean. But they, they also correspond to the progression of the sun sunlight from mid-afternoon to uh, late at late early evening and as the sun sets the long shadows are cast on the rocks last november 2019 we began planning a hands-on studio workshop but today the pandemic restricts our ability to meet eric has proposed another form of participation instead of a how to paint demonstration I thought about coming up with something more universal and in the form of a video which addresses artistic process. My suite of 12 paintings represents, for our purposes, a case study, an interdisciplinary invitation open to writers, musicians, artists, and enthusiasts alike. My focus includes a progression of experience as one descends a trail to a clearing, the Montauk moorlands to the Atlantic Ocean. But this might also be instead expressed in writing about the sensations of exploring a favorite room, a family home, or a garden. We can also photograph our neighborhoods, towns and cities, just as drawing and painting, which could also offer us an opportunity to explore events and memory. Much of my work involves optical and emotional memory, as well as personal experience, which enters the palette. And this is where I begin. In this time of pandemic, our work ultimately takes the form of a message in a bottle, the telling of our story telescoped into the future. This is meaningful personally for others and represents an important record. Sensations are, and feelings are gold in the realm of the artist. So don't be afraid of them. We often create first and analyze later, and this is right. Technology can also serve us in building an online community with commentary. I am inviting you to share your writing, images, and sounds to Instagram with the following hashtag, 
Warhol Montauk project so that we can share our experiences and learn about each other potentially worldwide and almost instantly. Thank you for your participation. We look forward to responding to your posts. Be safe, be well, be brave. Your ballet is both bright and intense. How is this part of your experience? Well, it's not entirely naturalistic, but more sensory. The, the site is both warm and cool in the late summer. The sun overhead as it descends into the west, as I mentioned before, it casts very long shadows among the rocks. And the atmosphere takes on a glowing quality, which is drained away as the evening sky canopy falls. Cool. Uh, you're painting with oil paint, but your work is also, also has quality of silk screen prints. Is this inspired by Andy Warhol? Well, I really admire Andy Warhol's electric palette and how he worked with opposite colors, which, which create tremendous vibration. Um, but I'm also imprinting with paint pressed onto the surface, as well as using painting knives and brushes. The screen-like quality of the paintings are a result in part from the heavy grade or the coarseness of the canvas and linen I work with. Okay, and how do you choose your canvas or linen supports? I prime both, both surfaces with a clear size, preserving the surface and its raw color. I also utilize the negative space as a painting element. The lighter color canvas has reflective qualities which are useful in a brighter painting. The linen seems to, to really absorb color and shadow. Cool. The rocks and stones are very present at the site. We can also experience, experience this shift in scale in your paintings. How is this important to you? The cliffs and bluffs in the distance are ever present, but they catch light and shadow very differently in each day. The same is true with the rocks. The tidal pools are like smaller versions of the landscape seascape, and at a certain point, the micro and macro become blurred into one, as well as the reflective qualities of the sky on small pools of water, just as in the ocean. The process of painting has actually became the journey itself at this point. Awesome. The titles point to a number of interests. Tell us about them. I don't want the titles to distract from the paintings, but they help me to locate the work in time and space. For instance, L'air Bleu and the Gloaming refer to the deep blue hues of long summer evenings in the Northeast, which is where I live and I have been painting. I occasionally utilize global positioning system notations to locate the work and place names equally. Sometimes a verse from poetry or a song that I'm listening to becomes a title in harmony with the painting. Awesome. Eric, what do you value the most about this experience at the preserve? The Warhol Montauk project has provided a personal escape during this precarious time. I've learned to become more comfortable with the journey the trail and, and what it re reveals along the way and valuing feelings and sensations first. This might also be a way to approach the looming dark winter and certainly life itself. It helps me to remember that there is a promise fulfilled in every sunset and every sunrise.